everybody, welcome. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. Thanks so much for watching. And in this series called The Acts of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk to you about the beginning chapters of the book of Acts because I believe we're in a season right now as we're even preparing to Pentecost and as we've passed Pentecost. But who here knows that Pentecost is now? Pentecost is not just about an appointed time or a specific date on your timeline, but Pentecost is our forever reality. So in this series, we want to talk about the Acts of the Holy Spirit, which is also the Acts of the Apostles. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about the three types of baptisms. Because yes, Jesus himself promises to you three types of baptisms. It is a promise from Abba Father, from God above. And I believe God's going to bless you in this episode, in this video, in this teaching. So open up your heart, get ready to receive, and expect a fresh baptism today. Let's go over to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verses 4. And the Bible says, And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. And Jesus ordered the disciples, the apostles, do not leave, do not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Here's Jesus. He's reminding the disciples before he ascends, before he returns back to the right hand of God at the uh, throne of the Lord. He says, stay in Jerusalem. Do not depart from this one place, but wait for the promise of the Father, which you've heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not from many days from now. Now, isn't that interesting? There's a few things I want to highlight here. Jesus, number one, orders them to not leave or depart from Jerusalem. Sometimes we leave a place too quickly in our lives. I believe we need to be in tune with the Holy Ghost and we need to walk with the Lord. But there's times where we rush ahead of God. And here's Jesus. He's saying, do not depart from Jerusalem. You have to be in this specific area code, in this zip code. You have to be in this specific vicinity. If you are one inch, one kilometer, one mile away from this borderline, then you will miss out on God's promises. But you have to be at this exact place at this exact time to receive this exact blessing. You see, God is an exact God, and there is an exact anointing, a specific grace that he's releasing for you. And when God says something, he many times is not vague or general, although he's a mysterious God, but he's also a very specific and detailed and ordered God. He's not a God of chaos or confusion, but he's a God of clarity and peace. You see, Jesus says, do not leave Jerusalem. So some of us need to stay in one place, stay in that ministry, stay in that position. I know it's hard for you. You want to leave. You're offended. You're not being promoted yet. You're asking God, why am I in prison? Why am I at Potiphar's house? Why am I serving in the prison place? And you may be wanting to leave quickly, but God to stay in that place until you receive the promise, the word of God. And the second part, Jesus says, wait for the promise. I love this. This is a big cuss word in charismania today. Wait. Wait upon the Lord. The Bible says those who wait upon him will be mounted up on wings like eagles on new strength. Are you ready to be mounted up? But we wait for the promise of the Father. How long are we willing to wait? How long are we able to stay patient to have long suffering, which is a fruit of the Holy Ghost. And that is really what differs between the flesh and the spirit. That is really the separating mark between the true on fire remnant and those who are nominal lukewarm believers of the day. Can you wait for the promise from the Father? Not something fake, not something filtered, not something fabricated, but we want the real thing. And Jesus says, you heard from me, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. I love it. Many uh, chapters later in the book of Acts, as the 
apostles who were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were running around, they were walking around throughout their day. And they ran into the disciples of John the Baptist. And as they ran into the disciples of John the Baptist, John the Baptist said, we've never heard about a baptism of the Holy Spirit. We've only heard about the baptism of repentance with the water. And of course, what happened? They were filled with the Holy Ghost in that instant, in that moment. So there are three baptisms that Jesus promises us. There are three baptisms. It's the baptism of water, which stands for repentance. It is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which stands for renewal. And it is the baptism of fire, which stands for restoration. There are three different types of baptisms. And let me tell you, most people today do not even experience the baptism of the Holy Ghost, which is a second level or the second type of baptismal promise. There are three promises that Jesus has for you. Three baptisms. And let me tell you, being baptized is in the Holy Ghost or in fire is not a one-time thing. I know we just passed Easter, we just passed Passover, Resurrection, and many Christians uh, do dual or, you know, they get re-baptized by water many times. And it's almost becoming a loose tradition. And in the olden days in, in Christendom, uh, if you were baptized by in water for your public confession and public dedication unto the Lord, uh, many times you could only be baptized once or maybe even twice at the most. Because in the olden days, so many people thought that being water baptized was another spiritual uh, junkie ritual. So they would continue to be water baptized, jumping in different waters every day, every week which opened up to demons and to uh, dualism and opened up to familiar spirits. And it was really a false doctrine and an error. However, many Christians are baptized on water in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, which is a public declaration, dedication of our faith. But it also stands for repentance. It also stands for uh, becoming born again. Of course, when you're water baptized, it means that you are being born again in the waters of the Holy Ghost or in the waters of the womb of God. Even as a baby is born in the waters of his or her mother's womb, when you're water baptized, it means you're being baptized or you're being born again in the womb of God. So water baptism stands for cleansing and washing. It stands for renewal. It stands for repentance. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the second promise, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, stands for renewal. It stands for life. It stands for power. It stands for justification. The baptism of water stands for your sanctification. But the baptism of the Holy Ghost stands for your justification because we are justified by the deposit of the Holy Ghost that lives inside of us. We are justified by God. The spirit of justice, the spirit that is just, this righteousness that lives in us, the power of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it is the justification unto God before the Father. So the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And remember, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but that does not mean you're baptized by the Holy Spirit. And of course, many denominations have differing dispensations, doctrines, beliefs about what does it mean to have the deposit of the Holy Ghost for salvation? What does it mean to have an infilling or to be filled with the Holy Spirit? What does it mean to be baptized with the Holy Ghost? These are three different dispensations. But I believe many believers have not truly been baptized by the Holy Ghost. Why? Because that word in the Greek, baptismo, means to be fully immersed. It means you are fully immersed. Like a pickle jar that is fermented in the juices, in the waters, the vinegar, that is fully immersed. It's closed off, kept off for three, four, five months, and it's stored away. 
How long have you been baptized like that pickle jar? How long have you been baptized in the juices of the Holy Ghost and the waters of God? And when you're fully immersed, it means you fully become baptized. You soak it all in. You're not just being filled like a cup, but you're fully overflowing and soaking. You become one. Many people have not yet been baptized by the Holy Ghost. And when you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, it stands for the dunamis power. It stands for the saving grace, the salvation. It stands for the demonstration, the power of Jesus Christ. But the third promise that Jesus promises in the Gospels, he said, there's coming, a, uh, John the Baptist, excuse me, says there's coming somebody who's Sandals I will be unworthy to tie, untie. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. That's the third promise. That's the third promise of the baptism from the Lord. It's the baptism of fire. And let me tell you, fire stands for glorification. The fire of God. It stands for the extra dimension of God's hand and God's power. The fire stands for a whole different level. You see, there's three baptisms, which in a sense stands for three uh, being baptized, immersed in each of the Godhead. My goodness. Each of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But many people have not yet been baptized in fire, which stands for the extraordinary, the unusual, miracles and workings of God. Are you ready for the unusual miracles of God? Are you ready to be on fire, to burn away anything in the soul? To be burned off, to be burned, to have any immoral, oppressive witchcraft things on the outside to be burned off? And Are you ready to walk in total freedom? There's three types of baptism that's promised by Jesus, by the Father. And it's promise. If he gives you a promise, then are you ready to fulfill the conditions to receive? But what does Jesus say? Stay in that place. Tarry, as the old Pentecostals will say. Tarry, push, press in until you gain that breakthrough. I want to pray for you now. As we have started this series on the Acts of the Holy Ghost, and as we talk about the three types of baptisms, I want to pray that you will experience a fresh baptism of fire, a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you will be undone, overcome, and overwhelmed by the goodness, by the glory, by the grace of God. Lift up your hands now, and Lord, I thank you for an infilling and for a baptism that wherever our friends are watching from, that you will touch them, you will fill them, you will anoint them from the top of the head to the soles of the feet. I pray that you will fully immerse them, that they will be fully undone, overcome. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, He has control, not you. When you're baptized, when you're being undone by the Holy Spirit, He has full control, not you. It's a Holy Ghost invasion when heaven invades your earth. God, I pray, take over now. I pray, fill them. Let the gifts of God be activated. And I thank you for a fresh touch and a fresh fire wherever these people are watching from. I come against any doubt in religious spirits and I bind right now any hindering factors and I thank you now, now, now. Receive the baptism of the Lord. Lord, I thank you for all of our friends watching today that their lives will never be the same again. Hallelujah. I want you to stay in that place and stay in that grace. Just keep receiving from the Lord. And let me tell you, God will fill you wherever you are. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim. And let me know if this word blessed you. And let me know if you received something from the Lord today. God bless you. Until next time, and look out for episode two.